Deep inside every one of us is a lion waiting to be unleashed. Are you ready to be unleashed into your destiny? As we stand on the edge of time, the web of deception is being unraveled. Carl Joseph offers you the red pill and the keys to unlock the shackles of your mind. Get ready to be transformed by God's supernatural power. Let's join him now. Today, friend, we're going to discuss the wonderful you. Yes, you. You are amazing, marvelous, staggering, wondrous, astounding, fantastic, and wonderful because you're created in the image of God. If you want to know what God looks like, take a look at yourself because you are created in his image and in his likeness. Amen? Now, as you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm merely a pastor, okay? So don't ask me questions about any of this stuff I'm about to talk to you about. I'm sharing some medical and scientific facts with you today, revealing just how amazing God's creation really is. Did you know, friend, you are the crowning achievement or pinnacle of God's creation, which is the supernatural tripartite infusion of spirit, soul, and body? As I've said before, our spirit man contacts the spiritual realm, our soul is able to access the intellectual realm, and our body contacts the physical realm. But our focus today is the physical body itself. Now, how could anyone in their right mind claim the human body with its 206 bones and 639 muscles could have possibly spawned from an algae in a fish pond? Are you kidding me? But of course, those that make this false claim of particle to person are blinded to the truth of the gospel by Satan himself, and they are unable to receive God's truth concerning our genesis. God's word literally reveals this in 2 Corinthians 4.4, and it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Friend, the truth is no one in their right mind would ever entertain evolution as a plausible path to our existence. But the truth is, people who do so are not in their right minds because of their spiritual blindness. But we, friend, have the mind of Christ, and we're in a very privileged position due to the abundant measure of truth revealed to us. When you got saved and born again, a veil of darkness was lifted from your soul. A light entered your spirit man, and you were redeemed from death into life. Therefore, many things became intuitively obvious to you after salvation. Now, friend, I'm going to share a lot of information with you right now concerning the human body, and some of you might start snoozing off or tuning out. But please pay close attention because you will be rewarded. Now, human beings have been known to demonstrate immense acts of strength under extreme duress. When a 3,600-pound car fell on his son, Maxwell Rogers lifted it up, clean off the jack that had collapsed, nearly crushing his son to death. Not only that, but Paul Anderson is famous for having lifted, get this, 6,270 pounds of dead weight in a backlift. Don't ask me how, friend. Now, did you know we are composed of trillions of tiny cells within the human body? In fact, we have 30 trillion cells in total, and our body is effectively a mini chemical factory, which performs about 10,000 chemical functions daily. Now, what's interesting, however, is that within just one of these trillion of cells, we have 10 to the power of 12 bits of data, which equates to each letter in 10 million books. The secret is within each cell lies a nucleus, chemically coiled in a strand of DNA. So if all the DNA containing instructions in our bodies were written out, it would fill a thousand books, each containing 600 pages. Wow. Every single cell possesses a unique genetic code, so complete that the entire body could be reassembled from information in any one of the body's cells, which forms the basis for cloning in modern-day science. All those scientists need is one cell to perform the cloning procedure. All God needs, friend, is one cell to gather the dead in Christ, whether cremated or buried, to rise again from death into life in the imminent rapture of the church. Did you know that DNA has organized chemicals and minerals to form a living, growing body, all of whose parts possess its unique identity? 
just as each cell is unique, you are unique in every way, friend. And you have something God has called you to do that no other person can do in the same manner. There are things that one organ of the body can do that the other cannot. Please don't hide your talents, friend. Don't hide your gifts from the rest of the body of Christ. Now, red blood cells, or discs, differ from white cells in that they voyage through our blood with oxygen to feed other cells. Muscle cells, which absorb so much of the nourishment, are sleek and supple, full of coiled energy, ready to explode into movement when they are called upon. Bone cells exude strength, and we can't forget the nerve cells. There are also very strong cartilage cells and fat cells, of course, which we don't want to talk about. But did you know the role that white blood cells play in the body? Are you aware, friend, of the onslaught of bacteria that seeks to attack the body on a daily basis? Do you know each and every time you wash your hands, about 5 million bacteria are removed from the folds of the skin? About 50,000 bacterial invaders lurk on the rim of any drinking glass. And about 1 billion bacteria live in just one teaspoon-sized globule of saliva. Consequently, our body is under a constant barrage of bacteria that seeks to gain the upper hand, and that's where our white blood cells come to the rescue. These white blood cells are specifically targeted to one invader. These white cells spend their entire life coursing through our bloodstream, waiting and scouting for an opportunity to counter the threat posed by these bacteria. Many times they are not called upon to give battle, but when they do, they have a life-saving job at hand. These amazing cells created by God hold within them the power to disarm a foreign agent that could cause the destruction of every cell in the body. Once the cells identify a threat, like smallpox, for example, it imprints these killer white cells to go after the danger in the form of bacteria. God has designed our bodies to fight infection and bacteria, utilizing these amazing white blood cells, which are ever ready to be called upon when needed. Friend, in any disease, the battle is always at the cell level. The body is equal to the worth of its separate parts, which all play a crucial role on a daily basis. In leukemia or anemia, for example, the malfunction of a single type of cell can ultimately destroy a person. The failure of one type of cell in the kidneys or liver especially can bring about tragic consequences on the entire body. The truth is, no cell is expendable, and each and every one has value. This theme of individual value is expounded upon by the Apostle Paul several times in the New Testament. Within the epistles he authored, especially within Romans 12.5, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4.16. The truth is, friend, you listening to the radio, who may or may not go to church for that matter, play a crucial role in the body of Christ. You might say, well, I'm not an arm or a leg, I'm not a mover or a shaker in the kingdom. But friend, you could be that one white cell who comes to the rescue of your friend in need, or provide a word of encouragement at the crucial moment. Had you not been there to speak out, other parts of the body would have suffered for your absence. If you hide yourself away, how can you positively influence the rest of the body? That's something to think about. In contrast, the red blood cells carry oxygen in the blood, and blood has a far greater capacity than water to absorb oxygen, although our body does comprise of about 70% water. With the presence of hemoglobin, which is a specialized protein, it enables greater amounts of oxygen to be bound to the lungs. Of course, for us living at a higher altitude in Colorado, God causes the amount of hemoglobin to increase in our bodies, and we're able to absorb more oxygen, which is necessary to live at these higher altitudes. But at the cell level, we can see the microcosm of God's creation. However, at the macro level, Paul's illustration of the human body is analogous to the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians 12. Regardless of what things may look like on the outside, the value of the cells, whether red or white, cannot be underestimated. Just like the liver and kidneys play such a pivotal role in the human body, though they're not so prominent as the legs, arms, or head, for example. Friend Charles Darwin was mystified along with others when it came to the human eye. He simply could not explain its intricacies in the context of his evolutionary theory and origin of species. He said, and I quote, 
to suppose that the eye with all its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree, unquote. Wait a minute. Did I hear that correctly? Darwin, by his own admission, confessed the notion of human evolution from a single cell organism as absurd because of the eye? Yes, friend, Darwin was perplexed. Now, we know far more than Darwin did at the time concerning the eye and its complexities. We know the amoeba has one cell, for example. But are you aware the human eye has 107 million cells? Seven million are cones, each loaded to fire off a message to the brain when a few photons of light cross them. Cones are what give us the full band of color awareness, and because of them, we can distinguish colors in the first place. The other hundred million cells are really rods which back up the cells in instances of low light. What's even more astounding is that the human brain receives millions of simultaneous reports from the eye cells. Each rod or cone triggers an electrical response in the brain which absorbs a composite yes or no message from all the rods and cones to produce an image for us. How wonderful is the human eye friend and we take it for granted each and every day. When it comes to digestion, the facts are even more prodigious. Our esophagus is an amazing organ which must dissolve food, but at the same time not dissolve itself. Did you know your stomach acid is so powerful, friend, that it would eat the varnish off a kitchen table in seconds? Friend, did you know the average person swallows about 2,000 times within 24 hours? Our heart beats over 100,000 times daily to move blood 168 million miles around our body. Wow, no wonder we're tired at the end of the day. We also take about 23,800 breaths a day to bring 438 cubic feet of air to our lungs. The airways to the lungs are lined with glands which secrete a sticky mucus film. The mucus acts like flypaper, catching germs and dust so it can be swept away by cilia. Cilia are thousands of microscopic hairs which flow back and forth 12 times a second. They move faster when they sweep towards the throat, pushing the thousands of bacteria in the system upward toward the throat where they are harmless in the digestive tract. The air passes through the trachea into the lungs, whose purpose is to exchange gases, which means taking into the body life-giving oxygen and removing poisonous CO2 and other waste products of our body's metabolism. This process is done by over 750 million microscopic air sacs called avioli. If spread flat, get this, they would cover over 600 square feet, a surface area 25 times greater than that of the skin. And check this, friend. Human fingers are so sensitive that if your fingers were the size of the earth, you could feel the difference between a house and a car. Wow, friend. We are truly fearfully and wonderfully made, as the scripture attests in Psalm 139, verse 14. And it says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Friend, I've provided you with enough facts about the human body today to make a nerd proud, but to also let you know none of this was by accident, and you are no accident. If you desire to learn more about the wonders of the human body, then I highly recommend a book by Dr. Paul Brand entitled Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. And some of the material in this broadcast today was discovered from that publication. So we give credit where credit is due. You've been listening to Carl Joseph and the Lions Unchained podcast. Carl is a minister who's witnessed God's supernatural power to save, heal, and deliver. Carl is a unique researcher who investigates current affairs, societal trends, technology, cults, and end time events, all through a biblical lens. Every Monday, new podcasts are uploaded, so stay tuned for the next opportunity to roar into victory. Check out carljosephministries.com for exciting articles, teachings, and discussion points. See you next week, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button 